In this video, I got together a bunch of copper players and put them up against pro player Foxa from Team OXG to see how many of the coppers it would take to beat him. Huge thanks to Foxa for taking the time to record this video with me. You can find a link to all of his socials in the description, along with his YouTube channel where he said he'll be posting his point of view soon. If you guys enjoyed this video, I encourage you to check out his channel and follow him with all the links in the description. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel while you're at it. If you guys want to see me do this video with different ranks, then let me know in the comments and by liking the video. But without further ado, on to the video. Alrighty, let's get this. Round number one. Uh, Fox had decided to be on attack for this. So if you guys remember when I did this video, uh, I personally chose defense. He preferred attack. So just a little difference in preference there. Let me turn the audio up for you guys real quick. About 30. Alrighty. So we're going to do bands one time. And then... We'll keep those bands for the whole game. So the way that this works, unfortunately, is I'm not able to invite like multiple people mid game. So we have to rehost after each round, but it's not a big deal. You guys won't notice anything. So let's see. The copper went for Iana. Ox is going to go for Blackbeard. All right. Because I guess the attack bands don't matter. Uh, we'll have Fox on a on attack each round. All right, Mira, getting Mira out of there. So the main the main bands that matter uh, out of the coppers is the uh, attacking band because Fox will only be on attack. And then the main ones for Fox is just the defender. So no Mira coming out from the coppers and Fox won't be able to play Iana, which I'm sure is not that big of a deal. All right, so we got Fox bringing out the Ash here. The copper is yet to pick. I think he got auto pick. So the copper is going to go smoke. Honestly, not a bad operator for a, a 1vx situation like this. Uh, excuse me while I try to, to figure out all the controls again. It, it's been quite a bit since I've done one of these videos. I think it's going to be... Yeah. Alright. Try to get used to it again. So, let's see what the copper's doing. Just opening the middle of that wall for some reason. I have no idea what this guy's doing. It rotates normal, but I don't know why he shotgun two holes in the wall like that. That's kind of wacky. Fox has got his drone hidden in sight. He's got no clue. These are some wacky holes, bro. Oh, he heard the drone. He just doesn't know where it is. So I'm interested to see where Foxa comes in to attack from. It's like he might just sprint in main door. Also, this is a secure area just to kind of prioritize gunfights instead of uh, the actual, you know, objective. So Foxa went straight in through service. I do not think the copper's ready for this. He is not aiming at anything relevant to where Fox is at. Here we go. Trying to take this gunfight with an SMG 11 at range like this, though, is kind of scary. Like, no matter what rank you are. Try to push up. Foxa hears that, though. Fox is going to go straight for sight, which is smart. Yeah, the copper reacts to this. Going to try to flank back through service. He only got a little bit of time to do so because Fox is securing the site right now. So he's going to hop off of that. He just easily secure right now. Yep, and there it is. Fox is going to pick up round one. So pro player one, coppers zero. So now we're going to add another copper to the team and see if Fox can actually pull through with the 1v2 clutch or if that's going to be too many. I'm sure he's got it. I made it to five coppers. I'm sure Fox will make it there as well. Alrighty. Round number two. Getting the 1v2 in here. So, uh, the way I'm doing this, by the way, is I'm just adding another person to the existing player's team. So, we started off with uh, Dial. I don't know. And we're going to add on Eclipse here now, uh, which I believe is what his name is in Discord. A little bit different inside of Okay, game. Whatever. So we're going to keep Foxa on attack. Uh, he did prefer attack, so we're going to keep him on that. And we're going to have him attacking Eclipse and uh, uh, Gazel. I don't know. Attackers need to locate the biohazard container. So this time they're going to go uh, Kitchen. So first round, if you recall, they actually went for Billards. But this time they're going to go Kitchen. So we'll see how Foxa chooses to attack this. I think he's still spawning by the main entrance. So we'll see. What he chooses to do. The castle is an interesting pick out of this as well. Foxa is Ash, so he's going to be able to get a few of these castle break kids, no problem. But 
you have to keep in mind he does have four castles now and two of the like beepers so that's a lot of utility fox is gonna have to clear those beepers are gonna be pretty helpful with, uh spawning out where fox is coming from because as he kind of played last round he's being a little bit sneaky playing it a little bit slow to start uh so that's gonna help them figure out where he is to start and then the castle of course just gonna block up a bunch of entryways so we'll see how he chooses to attack this looks like he may go for the front door we shall see so far we've got jaeger playing in the bathroom castle's gonna wow they're double he's double castling this that's interesting so fox is gonna use one of his oh he's got breach charges okay fox is in a good spot here i was hoping that he had breach charges because if he didn't he'd be kind of in a tough situation because ash only has two breaching rounds uh, but with him having breach charges, he's actually in a pretty good spot. The castle shouldn't be that big of a deal for him whatsoever. Oh yeah, he's got a great drone here too. So he's going to sneak straight in. He doesn't know that both of these doors are castled though. So not only is this door castled, but also the, the door to kitchen. So he's got quite a lot to open up here. And he's going to use one of his breach charges for the sun or the blue bar wall. So that's one less he has for the castle barricades. He's only going to have enough to open up the kitchen door slash wall as well as the sunrise door if he wants it open. I think he's going to try to breach charge this. Hopefully Castle doesn't hear that like he didn't. There's those beepers I was talking about. All right, so the Z pings come out. Looks like they think they're trying to tell him where he's coming from roughly. Castle's getting a little bit spooked by that recharge, but Fox is nowhere near it. Ooh, almost an easy kill for Fox on Jaeger. Put him to about 50 HP. Fox is going to rotate out now. Oh, the drone hall. Oh, no. Fox didn't get him. Wow. He's still there, though. He has no idea how he's getting shot. I don't think he knows the drone hall's there. I think Fox assumes he knows that the Jaeger knows the drone hall's there, but he doesn't. It was an easy kill for Fox. Come on. Fox, you got to win this, bro. Oh my god, that was close. Alright, so Jaeger and Castle are going to fall off back to kitchen now. Castle's actually watching this, which is good. That way, uh, he can't just, you know, walk straight in and shoot them in the back. Fox, I know he's there, though. He's trying to pre-aim it. He got the first kill. One more. He may not know that he's up here, though. It's a really weird spot. Jaeger's going to shoot, though, giving away his position. He's only 1 HP. They're both one shot right now. And Foxa got him, shot him in the back. That was getting close, bro. I was worried I was going to have a five minute long video here. <laughs> Foxa was getting real close to losing. Oh, man. GG's. All right. Round three, 1v3. Let's get it underway. Same thing. Fox is back on attack. Let's see how he handles the 1v3 now. He's been able to handle the 1v2 and the 1v1 pretty easily. 1v1 was super easy for him. 1v2... He was struggling a little bit with that Jaeger, um, but, you know, it's a little bit easier to see things from our perspective when we've got outlines and everything, so can't really hate on him, hate on him for that too much. Uh, he still got the win out anyways, so not that big of a deal. Now they're going to have three players, though, so they're going to be able to watch a lot more angles. Like, with each round, this gets progressively more difficult, like significantly more difficult. So they're going to opt to go Kitchen again, uh, which I like. Kitchen's a good site. Smoke's not going to have the shotgun, though, so unfortunately, they're not going to be able to make any sort of rotations unless uh, Al or Malusia's impacts, which she does. So they can make rotates if they need to. Uh, they've got the Jaeger. Fox is running Sledge, so he is going to be able to nade. So we'll see how Eclipse places his ADSs down, hopefully in some good spots. Or Fox is most definitely going to get some easy nade kills. He's also going to have to watch out for the Banshee as well. As we get more players in on the copper side, not only is it more gunfights the Fox has to win, but it's also more utility has, he has to burn. And he's only one person, so he can really only clear so much utility at a time. Right now, he's looking at three ADSs, three smoke grenades, and a uh, three Banshees. So he's got quite a lot of utility to clear. He does have the Sledgehammer, but he's not going to be able to clear a lot of that with the Sledgehammer. It looks like he's just trying to open some angles. What he could be doing right now is trying to open as many angles as he can. That way he can kind of figure out where they are and figure out what he wants to do later in the rounds. It's, it's a pretty smart move. Just opening up as much as he can. That way if he wants to rotate, 
Uh, he can kind of do that by surprise. You know what I mean? So if he wants to go kitchen window because he sees there's an opportunity there, he can go there and the window's already open. He doesn't have to open it to alert his presence there. So far, they're not really holding service. So he's going to just walk in service. But this could be really bad. Smoke is not in a position to help them at all. And both of these players here, Juice and Eclipse, are stacked up right now on the service wall. So Foxa could have an easy two frags here. Again, we don't see Smoke really in a position to help whatsoever. He's kind of just AFK back here. There's no ADS. Foxa might be able to bank a nade off the door frame here. He's just waiting for one of them to, to mess up and peek. There we go. So that's the first frag. So it's only a 1v1 right now, technically, because uh, Smoke is nowhere to be seen. Jaeger's going to get pieced up a little bit. He's 1 HP now. Smoke's not throwing any sort of smokes that are really helpful. This is an easy nade kill by Foxa. He's probably going to pick up that Jaeger. Yep, he downed the Jaeger with that nade. So now it's a 1v1. Smoke is really nowhere to be seen. So he might get a nade kill as well onto the smoke. Nah, he's going to confirm the other kill. So he knows where smoke is now. He's going to wait for him to walk in. Go with this, Foxa. Let's go. Foxa picking up round three. Easy 1v3 clutch for him. He played that perfectly. He isolated all of his 1v1s. Honestly, perfection. Absolute perfection. All right. Round four is starting. All right, anyways, uh, starting off with the 1v4. Fox is going to go sledge again. The defenders, the coppers, they're going to go for the billiards room. Smart idea. They've lost kitchen bomb site twice, uh, or I guess secure area site twice now. So they're going to opt to go for billiards this time, which I think is the better option. They're going to try to set it up a little bit as if it's bomb. Uh, like I said, I did do secure area. That way, it's a little bit more centered on gunfights and not the objective. Uh, when I was doing this initially, I was on defense, so I preferred it as that. But it maybe makes it a little bit harder on Foxa, if anything. But with that being said, uh, Fox has made it this far, all the way to the 1v4. Let's see if he can make it to the 1v5. I would love to see him just, like, wipe them clean, just all the way through. Beats him to the 1v5. That would be sick. So far with the lineup on the defenders, I'm not really sure why they've picked some of the operators. Like the Cade, for example, uh, it's just unlikely that Fox is going to be running a hard breacher, especially on coastline and especially in like a 1v4 uh, like this. There's no real need for that. And yeah, I just don't see what walls he would even try to open. So I feel like Cade not bringing much utility there besides the C4. Maybe it's a comfort pick for him. Maybe he likes the gun. You got to respect that. But the Malusi is going to be a bit of a problem for him. Same with the Azami. Let's see how he handles Azami. I actually haven't watched any pro players play against Azami yet. You know, the, the Azami player is Copper. Uh, so it's not like they're going to have like a crazy strat with her or anything. But it will be interesting to see regardless. So it looks like none of them even realize that Foxa has entered uh, in through VIP. They're kind of all crouched around. If Foxa pushes up here... He might be able to get an easy kill on like the Cade or someone who's kind of just out in the open. Looks like that's what he's going to try to do. He's going to just try to crouch in and get some easy picks. There goes the Malusi. So now it's a 1v3. He just clutched a 1v3 not more than 5 or 10 minutes ago. So let's see if he can do it again. Oh, he ran his drone straight into the Cade. The Cade did prove to be useful. He proved me wrong. All right, so it looks like no one's playing close. One's on the vase for him, so he knows we're both sad. He's going to try to get some nade kills, probably through the drone hole. The alibi did fall off, though, on a cool vibe, so he's not going to get anything with that. He's just going to play it slow, try to get some picks. He's got time. There's no need for him to rush, no need for him to push. I don't think he saw the Cade holding that angle right here. That was a close call. Alibi looks like she's going to try to flank. Uh, possibly a boy. I don't know that Fox knows this. He does. This is exactly where Alibi is. And he's going to kill him. Easy kill for Fox. A 1v2 now. Both of the players are a little bit isolated. Uh, Azami's going to head back to site now. Probably a smart move. Going to hold the luggage hall. That's probably nice. See where Cade's at. Cade's still going to be holding the hallway. It's going to come down to the gunfight here. Can Fox win the gunfight? He sees the Cade. Cade sees him. Both of them Both of them know where they, each other are. Can go for the nade. Oh, that should be an easy nade kill. Perfect. Triple kill for Foxa. 50 seconds left. He has plenty of time. Zami does have the HP advantage, so he's not even looking the right direction, and Foxa wins it out. 1v4 clutch, no problem for Foxa. So now we're moving on to the 1v5, and that's where the serious challenge is going to be. All right, 
1v5 has started. Fox has been able to take out one, two, three, and four copper players with ease. Let's see if he can continue it up to this point. Bringing in a brand new player. See if it changes anything. Going off of the previous rounds, I don't know if it will. Fox has been able to isolate the ones very, very well. It's really not up to Fox uh, whether or not he, uh, he can win this. I think it's up to the, the coppers. They need to learn how to play together more. He's, like Fox has really been able to just walk in and take a one and then take another one. Um, the coppers are not playing together whatsoever. If they were playing together, holding each other's crosses, uh, maybe it would be a different story. Do you see them bring out some traps? It would be really unfortunate to see Fox die to a trap. They're running the Capcan as well as the Frost. So hopefully he can spot that out uh, in the prep phase here, or the drone phase. That way he doesn't run into any. That's a really good uh, Thorn placement, by the way. Thorns inside a blue bar. Since they're like, they glow blue uh, in this whole room, they're so hard to see. Fox is also going to switch up his operator. So I think he was Ash the first two rounds. Uh, and then he went for Sledge. I think he wanted the nades just, just to try to get some extra kills. And now he's going to go for Finca. Finca is probably the best operator he could pick here, in my opinion. Because he's going to be able to heal himself. He can pick himself up uh, if he gets hit by like a Captain Trap or whatever. He uh, has the two nades as well as the Gon 6. And an LMG. So what's not to love about Finca? The defense they are switching up their ops like i said they're running some trap operators they're bringing the chanka out they're keeping that castle so i didn't really pay attention to where he placed all his castles but we'll see how that works out for him looks like fox is gonna go for a service push again i'm not sure if he knows the bomb is uh blue bar he saw thorn though isolated so he might try to pick off this one it's kind of what i was talking about they kind of play solo all the coppers really play solo See if that continues. Fox is going to use that Gon 6 I was talking about earlier to rip open that castle barricade. Chanka's already getting worried. He's already shooting off fires everywhere. That's not really going to bother Fox at all. He's not ready to push up just yet. Still trying to get some more uh, info. Looks like Chanka also is using the SMG. He's not actually using the LMG, which is interesting. Fox is now pushing into the main lobby. They're not giving them any ones. This is actually pretty good. They're they're all playing pretty together. They are a little bit stacked up. So if Foxa knows they're all stacked up behind this bar, he could go courtyard and get some easy wall bangs. We'll see if that's what he's going to choose to do here. And also, Castle's actually pushing up right now into Kitchen. I don't know that Fox knows this. He's going to try to watch his flanks anyways. But this could be really bad for him. Easy kill on the Thorn. She's playing a little bit too aggressive there. Brave's going to go for a flank. Fox is getting rid of that shield there. Yeah, Cray is really going to try to go for this flank, though. Fox it might be ready for this, though. Or maybe not. It depends. Yep, Fox is ready for it. Lighting him up to 1 HP. Cray's is in a terrible spot now. Fox doesn't know exactly where he's at, but... It's a UMP versus an LMG, and he's only 1 HP, so it's not looking good for Castle. As long as Fox clears his corner as well, he should have this in the bag. Yep, he already knows where he's at. Easy double kill for Foxa. Only three left. This is winnable. Two of them are playing inside a blue bar. Clips is going to walk into office. That's where Foxa was trying to push earlier. We'll see if he's going to continue to push there. He's only got 35 seconds, so he may try to commit to the kitchen take here. Chanka is still holding on the sunrise bar. And actually, a pretty good angle. We'll see if Fox is ready to clear that or not. They've got the bulletproof cams on him. He's going to go for the nade kill. It's his second nade. And he lost. Five coppers is what it takes to be one pro player. Really unfortunate timing for Foxa. Right as he goes to throw that grenade, he gets shot out by the Tachanka. Very nice attempt by him, though. I think if his timing was a little bit better, he probably would have had that. But let's go talk to him and see what he has to say about the games. Yo, yo, yo. Yeah. Uh, so, going to do a little post-game interview if you'd like yeah so sure. uh what do you have to say about the uh the coppers there like were they just not playing together because it seems like you took out all the way up to four like no problem were they just playing two solo uh i think their biggest the biggest issue is probably like the awareness because like there would be times where i drone out from like an area or i 
you know, clearly make, like, I open up a door, I open up, you know, uh, a window or shoot a cam, and it's almost like they still didn't know I was in the area. So I was kind of trying to, like, use a lot of my time to just, like, pick them off one by one without them, like, playing off of a trade. I feel like I was, like, I was practicing good habits on players that, like, don't have, like, you know, the, I guess, you know, in-game sense to understand, like, what they're supposed to do, like, for example, trading kills. I was kind of just trying to get one and run away and then get more info, get another, run away. Um, but yeah, I'd say like up until like one to four, I think the 1v2 is probably the hardest because I didn't know like where they were. They have a lot more corners and places to hide. Um, but I think when there was more of them, they were less aware because they just assumed something would be covered or that someone else would get kind of shot first before they would. So I was able to kind of like abuse that. But uh. Yeah, I didn't really realize that last round how much time I had left, so I was really just trying to like wind the clock down. Yeah, that's where what. Is I... secure, where is the secure area that last round too? Was it in red bar or blue bar? It was in blue bar. Oh, I didn't even. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even find this site for the first like thirty seconds. Yeah, I had it set to secure area. Uh, when I did this, I started on defense, so it was a little bit easier to have it as secure instead of watching two sites. But you chose attack, so I think it kind of made it a little bit harder for you, but. Yeah, that's something I noticed as well is they were like they were really playing solo and a lot of the time like I know in the 1v3 cl uh, clutch that you had there was two on site and then the third guy smoke was just like sitting in blue bar when the site was kitchen kind of just away from everything it didn't really seem to to know what was going on so that's kind of what I was picking up on as well is like their biggest problem was like awareness and just overall game sense I'd say for sure absolutely i mean those guys played great i, I think yeah I, attack i definitely should have probably went defense if i was really trying to try to go all out it's a uh, attack it was like you know like i said they just have to hide in corners and if i don't find them or drone for myself you know obviously like you know if you're getting shot in the back or shot in the side there's not much you can do about that so i think the one thing they were doing right when they got to the 1v3 is taking a lot of space like they had that guy on red bar blue bar but yeah absolutely the awareness of realizing like okay he's service now we should probably come to come back to site and there were some instances where they weren't trying to think of how they could kill me they were just trying to think of where i was going so for example exactly that kitchen round they didn't try to flank around bathroom they didn't try to you know make holes and play from main lobby or really have like any type of crossfire they were kind of just like okay he's coming through the kitchen door let's just all look at this kitchen door so i feel like that's how i was able to kind of move around and get kind of these like picks because i knew they were just going to be so like you know right there so right. i think uh that was the biggest thing for sure yeah well well played all around you did uh just as well as i did i i clutched out all the way up to the one before and then i couldn't go any further than that so GGs, I appreciate you coming out and uh, watching the video. Do you have any uh, socials or anything that you want people to follow? Yeah, uh, well, my socials is just foxa underscore r6, so f-o-x-a underscore r6, and that's on all platforms. And then my own YouTube is just f-o-x-a foxa. So oh, cool. thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. Are you going to make a video on this? Yeah, I'm going to try to. I mean, I recorded my POV. I was trying to give a little bit of... Uh, breakdown of like what i'm trying to do in this 1v1 just to kind of explain like a clutch situation and uh yeah i don't know we'll see how that comes out cool all right well i'll have all of your uh socials and everything linked down below so people are interested in watching uh your pov on that i, I think that actually sounds really interesting i'm actually glad that you kind of broke things down on your side i think people like really appreciate watching that so uh definitely have that all linked down below once again i i appreciate you coming out for the video Thanks for having me. I appreciate being, uh, you know, a part of it. Yo, yo. Right. Uh, do you guys want to do a little post game interview? Yeah, sure. Sure. All right, cool, cool. Give me one sec. All right. So, uh, what do you guys think your biggest problems were, like playing against him? Like, what do you guys think if you could go back in time? But what would you do differently? Definitely hold way better angles. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, like. I was just all over the place. He was shooting my feet under the bathroom door. Yeah. Yeah. So mainly just think like holding holding better angles. Maybe you guys' like overall positioning you guys think could have been like a little bit better. Yeah, yeah definitely mine in the first round. Got you. Well, I mean, Gangster had the best positioning on that last round. Bro, do that. Ugh, they work so well. Were you the Tachanka? 
Yeah. Yeah. So I, you were the only person out of five rounds to get uh, a single kill on him. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, my logic was, oh, God. No, no, go ahead. You're good. Oh, uh, I, at the beginning of our round, we didn't know what we were going to play. All we really knew for certain was uh, a castle. And then I was like, I should just go to Chanka. You know, that's the last round. You know, at, you know, if we're going to lose, you know, at least make it memorable. And then I thought to myself, you know, why don't we just all go trap meta, make him delay as much as possible. And I just kept firing my, the fire blast, whatever it's called. And it just, it worked. He pushed towards kitchen and I was on that ledge and I just shot him. Yeah. That's something I just did an interview with him as well. And that's sort of what he was trying to say as well is uh, the last round, he took a little bit too much time to push in. He, he said, that's why uh, he thought he lost that round. He said, if he could have done Done it a little bit differently, he would have pushed a lot faster. So I think that was definitely the right call by you guys to kind of rely on the traps and slow him down as much as possible. But um, overall, GG's. I think you guys played pretty well. He said so too. He said uh, you guys played pretty well. Um, appreciate you guys coming out to play. Uh, so thank you for that. Appreciate taking the time to let me join. Of course, of course.